Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where we talk about Hungarian true crime cases, murders, mysteries and conspiracies. And my name is Timea. Today's case is going to be absolutely fucked up. It involves a cover-up, conspiracy, a murder and incest. So that's your trigger warning, I guess. This is also going to be an episode of my communist crime series where I talk about a true crime case that happened during socialist times while also introducing the reality and the culture and the life of people that grew up in communism. I will also have all of my sources linked in the description. Obviously everything is in Hungarian, but if you want to check it out, you can. I'm also going to link a documentary that was made with the murderer. This case was also covered by the lead investigator turned popular true crime writer called Mag Bertalan, but he changed the names of the characters and he didn't exactly stick with every detail, so I tried my best to research the original um, story as much as I could. Unfortunately, in Hungary we don't have access to police files and a lot of contemporary sources, so I try my best to find everything I can, but sometimes I just have to rely on articles that may or may not be accurate. The main character of today's story is a woman called Patkush Maria. She was born in 1937 in the village of Mezetur in countryside Hungary and she only finished six years of her elementary education, which is not that little at all. Like my great-grandma only finished four years. It was quite common that people didn't finish school, they just dropped out after a few years when they were old enough to start a family and and they did not pursue an academic career after all. She lived on a farm with her family where they cultivated the lands and owned lots of domestic animals, so there was a lot of work to be done. Also, she worked in a factory kitchen. Even though she dreamed about becoming a seamstress one day, that never came true for her. Her family, the other very important characters of this case, were her father, Mr. Patkos, her mother, Mrs. Patkos, and her two brothers, Janos and István, as well as another family member, a woman called Takács Rosa, who I'm going to refer to as Rosa. It's not exactly clear what her family tie was to this family, but she was a close relative. And when Maria was 25 years old, she married a man, Salai Daniel. Now, how did she meet this man? In communism, there was a rule that people who were deemed kulak had to give up all their lands and possessions to an organization, I, I guess the best way to express it in English is a producer collective. Kulak is a Russian word that means rich man or rich farmer, big farmer, but it also means frugal. So you can see that the person who was frugal and owned a lot of land could only be the enemy of the communist state. So these people were required to give up all, what, all that they had and it was redistributed into this um, producer collective where you were then required to work essentially for free. Like you could not keep any of the animals or um, machinery or the land that you previously owned because it was now stolen by the communist state. Also, my family was victim to this. My grandparents lost pretty much everything they owned to this producer collective. And when I was in Portugal and I saw billboards advertising the communist party, I didn't know if I should laugh or cry because I feel like Western people in Western countries truly don't understand the reality of communism and what the fuck went down. You were exploited by the state and it was completely legal. So, either way, back to the story. The father of Maria, Mr. Patkos, wanted to arrange a marriage between his daughter and this man, Salai Daniel. I'm going to call him Dani. What Mr. Patkos promised Dani in exchange for the marriage, that because they're, both their families used to be rich landowners, and they are probably going to be rich landowners after the fall of the communism, which didn't happen until 1989, so that was a far cry. If they united these two families, then they could mutually benefit from it and build up something from nothing, I guess. 
So even though both Maria and Dani wanted to marry other people, in the end they agreed to this arranged marriage and they got engaged super quick and got married very soon after. They knew that they couldn't just marry for love, not in these times. I think arranged marriages were very popular. It was not that uncommon. So they got married on a Saturday, the 17th of November 1962, when Maria was 25 and Dania was 30 years old. And the party after the wedding was held in the wife's family home, as it was customary at the time. Also, because the young couple was kind of broke, they couldn't afford their own house, their own home, so it was traditional that the young couple would stay in the house of the woman's family. They would have their own room, their own designated living area. So this is what was going to happen to them too. However, one day after their wedding, Daniel disappeared and he was never seen alive again. Daniel worked at the Hungarian railways as a blue curl worker and when he didn't clock in for his shift on Monday morning, two days after the wedding, the company sent out a worker, a co-worker of Daniel, to check on him at his home, which was at the time the family home of Maria. He was also reported missing and the police started searching for him. People in the village immediately started gossiping about what could have happened to Daniel and there were rumors saying that he was murdered and hidden under the chicken pen or that he was murdered and his body was cremated in a fire pit or that he was murdered and his body was fed to the hogs. But there was one very obvious common point in all of these rumors, that he was murdered by the family of Maria. Foreshadowing. But is there any basis to this hearsay, you might ask. So the police went on to question all of the members of the Patkos family. Maria's version of events was that they partied all night long on Saturday, but then they didn't go to bed. They stayed up and collectively cleaned up the house and made order after this party and everybody went to sleep on Sunday afternoon. Which checks out, that makes perfect sense. She went to bed on Sunday afternoon at about 5 o'clock and Donnie came soon after and he also dressed down and laid down in their marital bed. They were supposed to consummate the marriage, however this didn't happen. When Donnie tried his advances to her, she denied and pushed him away and she said that she was sick so they couldn't have sex. Sick means that she was on her period and this is how they expressed it. 60 something years ago. She also said that she just fell asleep and when she woke up on Monday morning, Donny wasn't lying beside her in the bed. So she just assumed that he had gone to work and she also got up and went to her shift in the factory kitchen. However, he never returned home, right? And everybody in the family said that Donny must have left her because he regret marrying her, that they weren't really in love, it was an arranged marriage, so he just decided to run away from all of this. So there was no signs of foul play, he never turned up, his body never turned up, so the case kind of went cold for the next two years. It wasn't until two years later that the investigation picked up momentum again, when there was a new investigator appointed, Mark Bertalan, who also went on to write that book I told you about before. The police questioned everybody again and their version of events didn't change at first. However, the police realized that there were some weird inconsistencies that they did not notice before. The first inconsistency was that the family said that they that Donny was seen leaving to work on Monday morning wearing his blue shirt uniform. However, the railway company said that every one of the workers were given two blue shirts as their uniforms and both of Donny's blue shirts were found. The other clue was that at the time people wore lighter and warmer underwear for different types of weather and because they got married in mid-November it was already cold and it could have been snowing that day so it would only make sense for Donny to go wearing his warmer underwear. 
However, his warm set of underwear was found beside the bed. By underwear, I cannot tell for sure, based on the Hungarian wording, if they mean underwear as boxers and panties, or as undergarments, like a layer of clothing that you would wear under your uniform. But that's not particularly important. Remember when I said that the railway company sent out the co-worker of Daniel to check on him at home? This man said that when he knocked on the door and went inside to question the family about the whereabouts of Daniel, he spotted the winter cap of Danny on the chair. And when this person asked why or where Danny would live without his winter cap in such a cold weather, the family couldn't answer him. They just didn't know what to say. Do you remember Rosa, the relative of the Patkos family? She said that she stayed there all day on Sunday to help the family clean up the house. And she left the house at about 6 to 6.30 in the afternoon on Sunday. However, there were some eyewitnesses that said that they saw Rosa leave the Patkos family home at 8 p.m. So you can see the police quickly realized a lot of inconsistencies and that the family was hiding something from them. What was Donny wearing leaving to work, according to the eyewitnesses, if his blue uniform was still at home and his winter cap and his warm underwear was still there, why would have he left and disappeared on such a cold day without those things? So even after two years, the police had hoped that they would be able to find some evidence in the family home. And actually, they were able to find the faint traces of human blood on the walls, on the floor, in a kind of carpet beside the bed, and on the old pants of Mr. Patkos, the father of Maria. And when the test results came back that this was indeed human blood, they separated the entire family and started interrogating them yet again. This was when Maria came forward to confess the truth, now that she had this growing pressure on her shoulders. Her statement this time started out the same, that at 5 p.m. on Sunday she went to bed, and Dani came soon after, and then she denied the consummation of the marriage. But this time she said that Danny stood up and shouted, you are keeping a secret from me. And, she, and he went to the kitchen and came back with a big butcher knife to attack Maria, who stood up from the bed in order to defend herself. And as Danny lunged at her to attack her, he tripped over the rug that was beside the bed and fell into his own knife that he was holding in his hand, punctured himself in the heart, and died almost instantly. So she started screaming and shouting, and the whole family ran inside the room. And they were all panicked and afraid, they didn't know what to do, so they decided to hide his body somewhere outside. Now the police asked Maria if this is the honest-to-God truth, why didn't they report this incident to the police? If it was really an accident, what were they so afraid of? Why did they feel like they had to hide the body and keep it secret for two years? Hmm? She said to this question that she was ashamed of fighting with her brand new husband on the day of the wedding. Which, I don't know, to me it's kind of more shameful that you would hide the body even if it was an accident. It's not that shameful that you are shouting with your husband. You don't really need to be Sherlock to see that this is bullshit and nothing adds up. How the fuck would you be able to fall into your knife and puncture yourself in the heart and die instantly? And this family didn't report this incident and instead they just keep it secret even though it was supposed to be an accident. Like if you are falling with a knife in your hand you are going to fall like this, or like this. How? How do you... How? Maria, go to school. You shouldn't have dropped out only after six years if you're this dumb. Istvan's version of events, that's Maria's brother, was that Dani did not get angry at her because she did not have sex with him on the day of the wedding because she was on her period, but because Maria lied about being a virgin. So they supposedly have sex, but the sheets weren't bloody, 
indicating that she has had sex before. And this made Danny so angry and disappointed because he was promised a virgin wife and he felt like she was impure and a slut. So this is why he started yelling, this is why he yelled things like you are keeping a secret from me. Rosa also changed her version of events. She said that she indeed left the family home at 8 p.m. that night, just like the eyewitnesses said in the first time around in 1962. And she said that she left that time because she stayed there to help the family clean up the blood from the supposed accident. And this was still not the full and complete truth. We are going to uncover the most fucked up plot twist ever. Let's talk about what actually happened and how Donnie actually died, because you bet your ass it wasn't an accident. When Donnie supposedly figured out that Maria wasn't a virgin anymore, he started yelling and he said, you are keeping a secret from me, now I realize the truth and that your whole family has lied to me. The men of the family, so the father, Mr. Patkos, and the two brothers, Janos and Istvan, run into the room and try to keep him from running away and escaping this marriage. So they tried to overpower him. And at first, Dani was able to overpower the father and Istvan. However, Janos put up a very good fight. Dani punched Janos in the face, who started bleeding. In the end of this fight, it doesn't really matter, but in the end of this fight, the point was that Dani was being held down by the father, Mr. Patkos, and Janos, one of the brothers, while Istvan ran to the kitchen and picked up a big washing wood and hit Dani in the head. He started bleeding and he collapsed, but he was still alive and he wanted to stand up and run away, but Istvan seized the chance and hit him in the head one more time. Then it was visible that he was going to get, he was going to bleed out and he was going to die. And at some point, Maria entered the room with a big butcher knife and stabbed her brand new husband in the chest. And then at first, they decided to hide the body in the backyard under some corn leaves and then a few weeks later when the family f fertilized the soil for the next planting season they took out the body and dig it in the ground. The family collectively swore that they were never going to tell this truth to anybody and they probably felt like they got away with murder for the next two years before they downfall. But why did they do this and why did they allow this fight to escalate to murder and why did Maria stab him in the head, in the chest, when the two blows in the head would have sufficed to kill him. And was Maria's not being a virgin the true reason why Danny got so angry and wanted to divorce right away? The true motive was the last piece of the puzzle that the police uncovered. You see, Maria and Istvan, her brother, were in an incestuous relationship for the last 12 years, ever since Maria was 13 and Istvan was 16. And it was an ongoing relationship, they never broke up, their parents, nobody, nobody knew about this. They had sex and they were in love. So obviously, Istvan was very jealous when Maria was supposed to have this arranged marriage, but she didn't have any other choice. So she promised her own brother that he was going to be the only person she would ever have sex with and that there wouldn't be no consummation of this marriage on the wedding night. How fucked up is that? Like imagine her promising her brother, I love you and I'm only ever going to have sex with you. What doesn't make sense to me is if the family truly did not know about this incestuous relationship whatsoever then why were they accomplices to the murder? Why did the father and Janos, the other brother, hold down Dani and let him be beaten to death and then stabbed? I don't understand why he would do that if they truly did not know about this incest going on. What I think went down is that on the wedding night, Maria didn't have sex with him and she told him it was because she was in love with her own brother and she wasn't a virgin anymore and she would never have sex with her husband. 
And this is why he became angry and started shouting that you are keeping a secret from me and I can't believe that I was tricked into this sick relationship and your whole family is fucked up and I'm going to leave right away. And I feel like the family knew about the incest going on because otherwise why would the father and the other brother, Janos, comply with this murder? If not because they wanted to save face and not let the whole community know that their kids are fucking. I don't know, but that just makes a lot more sense to me than the f idea that the family didn't know about the incest. So on the 29th of October in 1965, the trial ended and Maria was charged with one count of murder and one count of incest and she was sentenced to only 15 years in prison. Istvan, her brother, was sentenced to 8 years in prison, Mr. Patkos, the father, got 2 years, 6 months, and Mrs. Patkos, the mother, and Janos, the other brother, did not get charged with anything because the police could not show any proof or evidence of their guilt. And Rosa was the only person who couldn't bear with her guilt and she committed suicide by jumping into a well, which is a surprisingly common way of suicide in Hungary. Unfortunately, I know that from personal examples. After her release, Maria moved back to the house where all of this went down. Istvan moved to Budapest after his release and started a family, I guess not with his own sister, and Mr. and Mrs. Patkos, as well as Janos, the brother, eventually just died and there is no information on them. But that is not all. I also linked uh, the documentary, or more like an interview with Maria when she was in prison, down in the description, if you want to check it out, obviously it's in Hungarian. And this is an interview conducted by two reporters and they kept asking her questions and suggesting that she was not the one who actually killed Dani and that she just took the blame for the rest of the family so she would be sentenced to prison for the longest time. And her body language and her vague answers and her lack of response to me shows that this is true. She actually was not part of the murder probably, and she was not the one who killed him. He was just probably beaten to death, and she said that she stabbed him, she gave him the final stab, and this is why she got the longest prison sentence. And the reason to her being the scapegoat of the family is that they lived on a farm with animals and plantation and lots of work to be done. So if somebody had to go to prison for this crime, it should be a woman who, according to the men, was replaceable and worthless as a worker. So the men could stay at home and cultivate the land while somebody else sat in prison for them. I don't know, this makes a lot of sense. You can watch the documentary and decide for yourself if you think it's true or not. The mother of Dani is also in this interview and she is convinced that Maria was the murderer and she hates her so much, which I understand her son died a very sudden, young and unjust death and it shouldn't have happened. There is no reason for this. It was so senseless. And all she wants is to get back the body of her son to give him a proper burial. She also pursued the death penalty, she wrote a petition and got, I think, 500 people's name on this list who wanted the death penalty for Maria, but she didn't get it in the end, obviously. I think that the sentences that they got, this 15, 8, and 2 and a half years, is honestly nothing for murder, incest, a cover-up, conspiracy, lying to the authorities for 2 years, and the body was never recovered. I think that is honestly pretty much nothing of a sentence and if she was truly the murderer and this family truly conspired to get rid of this man, then they all should have gotten life in prison in my opinion. But I don't know, what do you think? Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Who do you think the actual killer was? What do you think of the motive, the incest? What do you think of the police work? What do you think of the sentences that they got? Do you have any questions or comments, concerns, any quiz requests? And let me know what you would like to see next because I have a lot of interesting things in mind like 
fun Hungarian history or weird things about Hungarians or more videos on communism. If you made this far into this video, please don't forget to like and give me a comment, honestly, whatever you want. Which country you are from or what's your favorite food or if you have any weird questions. And the biggest and best help you can give me is that you share this video with one of your friends. So thank you very much for watching and I see you next time. Bye!